Greetings, old friends. When Professor Moriarty pops up at the end of the Star Trek Picard Season 3 trailer and utters the line, Greetings. Greetings, old friends, as he aims a pistol at the camera, Star Trek The Next Generation fans gasped in glee. Yeah. Well then. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Played by the enduring Daniel Davis, the character was only featured in two episodes over seven seasons, but he is often regarded as one of the best villains of the whole series. A holodeck character? A fictional man? The character was so good, he was briefly considered to be a Star Trek Voyager regular and spawned the idea for an emergency hologram doctor. Say thank you, Robert Picardo. The doctor! This isn't real, is it? So why now after all these years? Does Data have something to do with it? Did Vatic reach into her deep, dark bag of tricks to stop Picard at all costs? And more importantly, does his return say something you should be paying attention to when it comes to the final season of Picard? What we have to share might just surprise you. We're ready, as are we. So you don't want to miss this episode. My fate is in your hands as perhaps it always was. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so now and give us a thumbs up if you want more honest pop culture like this. And make sure you stay tuned to the end to see how to get this awesome Star Trek Make It So inspired graphic design from the amazing artists at Mixtees.com. My mind is crowded with images. Thoughts I do not understand yet cannot purge, they plague me. There aren't many times someone got over on Jean-Luc Picard aboard his ship during TNG, but for two episodes, Elementary Dear Data and Ship in a Bottle, that's exactly what happened. In these episodes, we meet Sherlock Holmes' nemesis, Professor James Moriarty. Professor James Moriarty. And apparently the only holodeck character who could properly match wits with Data. All photons and force fields, Moriarty was created after Data, Geordi, and Dr. Pulaski were having a discussion about Data's ability to solve problems like Sherlock Holmes. Pulaski said Data could only solve mysteries because he'd memorized all the novels. So Geordi suggested a test and decided to let the computer create an opponent for Data and told it to create an adversary with the ability to defeat him. Enter Moriarty who would not only end up being a match for Data, but even Captain Picard himself. Moriarty was played by the brilliant stage actor Daniel Davis, who would go on to fame as the snarky British butler Niles on The Nanny from 1993 to 99. Unlike other hollow characters, Moriarty would become aware of his own consciousness and plot to take over the Enterprise and somehow escape his prison. I think, therefore I am. After two wonderfully fun episodes, Picard gets the better of Moriarty, although he is none the wiser and believes he has escaped the Enterprise with Countess Bartholomew. It is a wondrous sight. And as far as they were concerned, heading for Melus too. Unknown to Moriarty, he and his beloved were actually still in a hollow program and would spend the rest of their lives inside a memory module on board the Enterprise D. This enhancement module contains enough active memory to provide them with experiences for a lifetime. But didn't the Enterprise D saucer section crash on Viridian 3 during the events of Star Trek Generations? So what happened to Moriarty and the Countess? Have we already been given information about Picard Season 3 that might tell us where he is? Before we break it all down for you and explain why Moriarty coming back is great for Star Trek moving forward, I just had to have Moriarty back, I don't know what to say. Let me quickly tell you why you are going to love this video sponsor, Established Titles. I'll bet you had no idea these two podcast guys making this video were Scottish, did ya? Or with a name like Montgomery, who would have guessed? And did you know they're actually lads? That's right, thanks to established titles, these American yahoos were able to connect with their Scottish birthrights and now you can too. This makes one heck of a dandy gift. Oh, established titles is a fun and unique project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lads or lords or ladies in English. Their title pack gives you at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Eddleston, Scotland and includes an official certificate with a crest. 
And when you buy a title, you're helping to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. Plus, established titles plans a tree with every order. And the first 200 people purchasing a title pack with our link will effectively be next to our plot. We can build our own little popcast kingdom. We'll tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. Hey, bro, you know you don't have a Scottish accent, right? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Established titles makes an amazing last minute gift. You could officially include the title Lord or Lady on your credit card, plane tickets, dating profiles, etc. Established titles is actually running a massive Black Friday sale right now. Plus, if you use the code ThePopCast, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash ThePopCast to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Lord. So, Your Majesty, Your Highness, that'll do. Thanks. There is almost nothing in the trailer for Picard Season 3 that gives away Moriarty's purpose on the show. But what we do know is the last time we left him, he would have crash landed with the Enterprise D. But thanks to Patrick Stewart, who told us there would be multiple Enterprises in Picard Season 3, as well as an Easter egg of a recovered Enterprise D saucer section ship plaque in Picard Season 2, and Mr. Loose Lips LeVar Burton, who plays the beloved Geordi LaForge, we now know the TNG era Enterprise is in the upcoming season of Picard. Burton let slip last May at Megacon 2022 that the nostalgia of being back on the bridge and that the sense of coming home was real, like being in a time machine and transported back to the late 80s. That confirmation that we'll be seeing the Enterprise D means that there's a good chance Moriarty is somewhere in there too. Did he escape from his program or did someone release him? How mad do you think he is after learning he was bamboozled by Jean-Luc Picard? Would it make him angry enough to go looking for his old friends as the clip would have us believe? There are a few things we know for sure. Following the panel at New York Comic Con recently, Davis's non-disclosure agreement was loosened and he was able to discuss the upcoming role a little bit. I have to say a hallelujah because my non-disclosure agreement was lifted yesterday at the New York Comic Con. In a cameo interview with Timothy Roy, Davis said fans will enjoy what happens more if they understand his role as a callback to an earlier season before Moriarty appears. This Moriarty has something to do with the first meeting between Riker and Data. Davis also gives us a line that Riker says in his scene with him. Riker will say, this is not the Moriarty we knew from the Enterprise. Davis confirmed this line to be true. It's a different Moriarty, but still is Moriarty. As Riker says in the script, in the scene that we did, this is not the Moriarty that we know from the Enterprise, and in fact that is true. Davis also divulged that all of the filming for his character was shot in Los Angeles in one day. So expect maybe one or two episodes with Moriarty. Perhaps he will play a distraction as part of Vatic's plan to torment Picard. Or maybe it's something else entirely altogether. There's also the possibility that Moriarty plays an ally of some sort. Imagine Lore on the loose and no one able to keep him in check. Lore. Why not retrieve the Hollow program that was smart enough to defeat his brother Data? This leads us to believe that whatever Moriarty is doing in Picard Season 3, it likely has something to do with Data or Lore. Moriarty's character is complicated. While technically a villain, he is layered and we are sympathetic to his plight, being stuck as a hologram, aware of his existence. Regardless of what role Moriarty plays in Picard Season 3, the TNG flavor he will bring is what is most important. After all, this is what showrunner Terry Metalis is bringing to the table for Picard Season 3. He is bringing us away from Picard Seasons 1 and 2 and back into Star Trek The Next Generation. Back to a world that makes sense to longtime fans, and a send off that our most beloved Star Trek crew deserves. By every account, Metalis is a fan of Berman era Star Trek. He worked on both Star Trek Voyager and Enterprise, and when he decided to do Picard Season 3, he knew he wanted to give the show an ending he wanted to see as a fan of Star Trek The Next Generation. To say that Moriarty is only the tip of the iceberg is an understatement. This final goodbye to Picard and his crew is a 10 hour movie, and the trailer gives us a two and a half minute sample. Moriarty is important because he gives us a sense of what is coming. I can't think of one TNG fan who doesn't love Moriarty. Now ask yourself, how many other characters would we love to see just one more time? But not cameos that serve no purpose. Moriarty and anyone else we might see in Picard Season 3 will have a purpose to the story. 
There is no fan service for the sake of fan service in Picard's final season. Each member berry has a place and a purpose. Whatever Moriarty's purpose in the show, the one thing we know is that he will have a purpose that forwards the story. There is a reason every actor involved with Picard season three says that none of this would be possible without Metallus, and that's because it's true. We are blessed to have had Terry Metallus, who loves this cast. Picard season three will be the first season of new Star Trek actually made by a fan of the show. Someone who believes that canon should be respected, honored, and followed. There are a lot of people who have their doubts after Picard seasons one and two, and we would be the first to say, we don't blame you. But Moriarty is a sign of good things to come. February 16th and the premiere of Picard season three is just around the corner. And thank God, because we need well-made Berman era Star Trek again. We predict that longtime fans will fall in love with Star Trek again, and hashtag Terry Trek is going to be a thing. We believe, but you'll have to decide for yourself. If it's as great as we think it's going to be, let's hope that this brand of new, old Star Trek is only the beginning. What do you think? Are you excited for Picard season three? What role do you think Moriarty will play in the show? Which character are you looking forward to seeing most? Let's talk about it in the comments below. Also, support the channel and check out this incredible Star Trek Make It So graphic design in our store. Get 20% off your purchase by using coupon code THEPOPCAST. The link is in the description below. I think, I think it's a pretty satisfying conclusion.